Hello and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we are actually going to be filming inside my house instead of in my art studio because it's kind of smoky outside. We're having some fires in the hillside and I want to be safe. I hope you are being safe if you are a part of the fires that have been surrounding us, especially here in Southern California. So I am going to be using my camera to film from above. This is my little camera that I use. So in a minute, I'm going to flip over to my camera. But for right now, I just want to show you what we're going to be working on. So I'm calling this lesson Happy Camper because um, I'm always happy when I'm camping. I haven't camped in a while, but I love camping. It's one of my favorite things. So I hope that you enjoy this project and we are going to be using paper like we always do. You're gonna need a pencil. You're gonna need a Sharpie marker. Remember, always use Sharpie marker. It's a much better marker to use than like say a water-based marker like Crayola because Sharpie doesn't run or bleed if we color anything over it. You're also gonna need an eraser. You can use the one on the end of your pencil and then something to color with. So let me show you my picture here. So I used a combination of marker and crayon. So if you have both, go ahead and gather both items and we'll get started. All right, so pause the video, gather your items and then meet me right back here. All right, welcome back. Here we are. Time to get started on our project. So first thing, I want you to notice that I have both crayons and markers today. And I'm gonna to be using both. And I'm gonna show you one of my new finds that I'm super excited about. Okay, these are called Crayola Super Tips. I got the 50 set and this was at Target and it was on sale for like $7. I think I saw it on Amazon for $14.99, but I got it at Target um, and it was like $7. So this thing is awesome because I love Crayola tools. And let me show you, you have all these amazing colors that come in this set. And the thing that I'm really loving about these markers, because I had never used them before, they have a fine point, but then they also have a side that's really wide so that you can get that broad stroke. So if you have a Target or Walmart or if you want to order them from Amazon and you have an opportunity to order them, get them. They are awesome. All right, let's begin our project. So we have our paper. Remember to always put extra paper underneath in case your marker leaks through to the background paper. Um, we're gonna start with our pencil. We're gonna draw a dot in the middle, like we always do. And the first thing I want you to see on my picture is that we're gonna be drawing a large rainbow for our little camper trailer. And that rainbow is gonna be arched very high and then come down low. We can change it up a little bit later, but that's the first part. Now, since that's the main focus of our picture, we wanna make sure we're drawing this really large. So go ahead, take your pencil, and then I would probably go maybe at least three or four fingers away from that dot so that you have a nice big trailer. So this would be four fingers for me. So three to four fingers away, and then you're just gonna make a nice big curved rainbow on both sides. We're gonna erase that dot later. That's just there to kind of help us place our trailer. And then you're gonna bring your trailer down a little lower, below that dot, make sure it's below the dot. So once we have our little trailer shape in, then what we're gonna do is draw a straight line underneath right here. And so I don't really ever use a ruler. What I use is sometimes I'll take a box, like say the box from my markers, and I just lay it down like this. I kind of make sure I'm eyeballing it, that it's pretty even from the bottom. If you have a ruler, you're welcome to use a ruler, but I really never do. I'm gonna draw a line across the bottom of my box. And then you want it to extend out a little bit farther from the front because we're going to draw the trailer hitch right here. And then back here, that's where um, we're going to put our wheel a little bit later. So I don't need it to go extended past the back of the trailer here. So I'm going to erase that line. But here, this is going to be my little trailer hitch. So the first part of my trailer hitch, I'm going to go up and then I'm gonna bring it back again. 
Now in some trailers, they'll store a little extra propane or gas tank right here, but we're not gonna put that there for ours. We're just gonna keep it really simple today. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little rectangle box up here. That would be the hitch that it would attach to the back of the car driving it. And then we're gonna extend this line a little bit below. We're gonna add a small little wheel here. with a little hubcap inside. Now over here, we're gonna draw a larger wheel. Now we wanna make sure that we line this up so that both of our wheels are even. So once again, I'm gonna go back to uh, a straight edge surface. So I'm gonna use my little box here. I'm gonna scooch it down just underneath my wheel. See, here's my wheel, make sure it looks pretty level. Give or take a little bit. And I'm going to draw another line. That will end up being the dirt. Let me show you in my picture. See, right here, we're going to make it kind of wobbly later. It doesn't need to be straight. But that's going to help us place our wheel. So now you get to decide how large you want your wheel. You're going to leave a little space on the back side, probably about a finger or two fingers back here. And then you're just going to draw a big round circle here. So I'm just going to move my pencil around. I'm not really drawing too dark yet. I'm just kind of moving my pencil around in a circle. Letting my pencil just lightly touch down. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to find the center of the wheel. Make a little dot where the center is. And then in that center, I'm going to draw another circle. And then one more circle around that. I'm not very good at drawing circles. So they're always wonky. That's okay. When I'm finished, I'm going to erase the bottom of the trailer out of the wheel because we don't need that anymore. Erase the dot in the middle of the wheel. I think I'm going to make my inside of my wheel a little smaller. I like that better. I'm always changing my mind. Okay. So now we've got the little plain part of the trailer done. We have the hitch done. We don't need the dot anymore. We can erase that. So now we're gonna get creative. All right, so what do you wanna do for a door? So you could have a rainbow shaped door. You could have an oval door, a rectangle door. It's up to you. So I'm gonna leave a little space and then I'm gonna draw a door in front of the wheel. So right over here, I'm gonna decide where I want my door to be. I'm probably gonna do it about a finger space away from the wheel. I mean, yours doesn't have to match mine. I'm gonna start with the bottom of the door here. So I'm gonna parallel line right above this one. And then how high you want your door. I'm gonna make another parallel line to match. So right about now, if you want to, you could go back and grab a box to trace around if you wanted to. So let's say if your crayon box here, you could use that for making straight lines or you could just eyeball it. I'm just gonna eyeball mine. I'm not too worried about everything being super straight, especially when I go over it with my marker later. You could decide if you want to have a double door. Maybe you want a door that can open from the top and open from the bottom. That's called a Dutch door or you can just have a single door. In this one, I separated the door and made two different colors. And then the next part is to uh, take our pencil and decide whether we wanna break the trailer up a little bit. For instance, in my picture, I drew a dividing line right through the middle right here. That way I could do two different patterns. You could divide it three times. Maybe you want to do one pattern at the bottom, a different pattern in the middle, and another pattern at top. 
by the way, it doesn't have to be a straight line. Maybe you want to do something like a wavy line that goes right through your picture like this. You could absolutely do that. You could do triangles on the top and squares on the bottom or hearts and rainbows, or you could do your favorite sports team. So I think I'm gonna keep it kind of cool like this and do it a little bit different than I did the last time. So last time I did a straight line, this time I'm gonna do a wavy line. You could also do a little cutout so part of the back wheel is closed off like a fender. So if you wanted to, you could cover up a part of the wheel like this. So here's a totally different look. So now there's like a fender that's going up and around the wheel. So part of the wheel is covered. See how I did that? Looks a little bit different. Next, you're gonna decide what do you want to do at the top? What kind of pattern? Do you want a second line at the top? Maybe you wanna draw a little pendant flag up there, or maybe you want to decorate your picture with flowers or footballs, or maybe all different things that have to do with camping. So I'm gonna draw a pendant. So the last time I did a pendant, I did it up at the top like this so I had room for my window. So I'm gonna not make my pendant come down too low. This is just another way to decorate. And I'm just making some little triangle kind of V shapes for my pendant. And then what kind of door do you want? I mean, I'm sorry, what kind of window do you want? Speaking of windows, you can put a window inside your door as well. So here, I could add a window. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be a square window. You could do an oval window. You could change everything up and make everything more rounded. Like maybe you don't want the door to be rounded. I mean, I'm sorry, to be square on the corners. Maybe you want the doors to be a little bit more rounded on the corners. So you can do that too. Lots of options here. Okay, I am going to extend this stripe one more time through my picture. Like this. And then you can decide if you want to have a window back here. So if I was going to add a window, I could draw a little small window up at the top here or if I didn't add this line, look, I have more room to draw a bigger window. Now in my first drawing, I had a really big square window. This time I'm gonna do more of a rectangle window and I'm gonna round the corner so it matches my door. So this one's gonna look very different than my first one. Now inside, what do you want to put inside? You could draw a face. Maybe you are inside your trailer. Maybe you could have a dog or a cat looking out the window. You could put curtains. These are curtains that I drew. That was really simple to draw. So let me show you how to do curtains. You start here in the center and I'm pulling the curtain back halfway. And then I put another section going down like this, kind of like you're making the letter of the ball. I'm going to do the same thing on this side from the center. I'm going to bring it back and then bring it out. And then I'm just going to double up this little line right here so it's like there's something like a ribbon or something pulling that curtain back. And then I'll just draw two lines coming down like this, kind of like the little uh, pleat in the fabric. All right, got a window drawn. I have designed a uh, kind of a pattern running through my door. I could actually extend this more like that. And then you can decide what kind of pattern you want to do later once we get to the marker. So let's leave it simple for now.
Next, we're gonna go on to drawing a horizon line. So the horizon line is this area at the back. It's gonna separate everything in the front from the sky. So right here, I'm gonna draw one line that runs across my paper. So once again, this is a good time to go ahead and grab uh, your box, maybe the box that your markers came in. And you can place your box like this. And then draw a line that runs across the paper. If you don't have something with a straight edge near you, just eyeball it. Just take your pencil and sketch it like this. So in the very far distance, it's up to you what you want to draw, but you want to keep those things very simple. Things far away in the distance are not going to be as detailed as things in the foreground. So as you can see, my mountains are very simple and I have some very simple trees. So I'm just going to go up here and draw a very simple angled line for my mountains. And I'll add something else to it later. I'm not going to work on that yet. I have to decide where I'm going to place my trees for our camping spot. So I'm going to put one tree over here on the left side, and I'm going to have it behind the trailer hitch. But you could also put it in the foreground in the front, and it would cover up part of your trailer hitch. So you could put it down here and bring it lower and make it large here in the foreground so that this is hidden behind part of the tree. But I'm going to be putting it just coming off the edge of the paper. So I'm going to be starting out by just making a really simple triangle shape like this. I'm going to do a half of a triangle because I, I don't have enough room here to draw a whole tree. So I'm going to draw a half of a tree like this and a half of the trunk. I'm going to make sure my trunk is higher than my wheel because I want this tree to look like it's behind my trailer. And then over on this side of my paper, I'm going to put a stream running through my campsite. That would be the best place to be camping would be next to a stream. And then this tree, I'm just going to put over in this section. Here I'm going to have room to draw an entire tree. So I'm just going to start by making a little line where I want my tree to be. I'm going to start first by drawing the trunk. I'm not going to make my trunk too tall. I'm going to at first, just draw a really simple triangle shape like this. I'll have to decide how big I want it to get. I'm just kind of sketching as I go here. Now we can keep them really simple like this, or later I can show you how to make them into a tier. This has four tiers, this tree has three tiers. Sections. Now up here in the front, you've got room here. And this is where you could draw a couple different items. So maybe you want to draw you sitting, reading a book, or maybe you want to draw you and your pet, if you have a pet with you. Or maybe you want to draw just something simple like a campfire. So I'm going to do a campfire. And if you want to do that, I'll show you how to draw the campfire. I'm going to be starting by drawing the letter X. So you can see here the two logs are crossed over one another. That's where I'm getting the X shape from. So when you make your X, you want your X very far apart like this and not super tight like that. So you want them spread out like this. So spread out, not close together. So I want to make two lines like this, very spread apart. So that's a very wide gap between the two. And then you're going to draw another set of, the, of these lines, one on each side. So I'm going to copy this line here, going parallel. This is just the middle line that we're going to get rid of in a minute. And I'm going to draw the same thing on this side. 
And then at the top, I'm going to round the top like this. So this is the back end of the log. Now I'm going to draw the front end of the log. So for the front end of this log, we're going to round it the opposite direction. We're going to go this way. We're going to be erasing this line in the middle because we don't need this anymore. You can erase everything, as a matter of fact, out of this section here. And then we're going to round the top just a little bit like this. So now it kind of looks like a piece of chalk. And to make it look like a log, we're going to make a kind of a coil shape inside here. So I'm just going to start in the middle and just add a few little lines curving around like that. Our second log is going to be underneath this log. But to make it easier, you can actually draw the lines through the log just to kind of help you out when you're drawing it. So I'm going to draw one line on this side. So you can draw it right through if you need to. And then one line on this side. You can draw it right through the middle if you need to, because we can erase it later. Then you're going to close it off on this end this way. And then on this end, we're going to close it off just like we did the other one. And then we're going to round it on the top. We're going to go back to this top log and erase anything through the middle. We're going to erase the center line through the log that's underneath. And we're going to finish it off by adding a little swirl inside. Now later we'll add a little bit of lines with our marker to make it look like uh, the, the bark on the outside of the wood. Next we're going to add this teardrop shape so we can add fire to our campfire. So right here in the middle, I'm just going to make a swooping line that comes down and comes back up again, just kind of like a teardrop shape. I'm going to erase all the lines out of the teardrop shape. Later, when we get to our marker, we're going to swirl our marker around a couple times really loosely to make it look like fire. Okay, we want to get rid of this hard line here. We don't want it to be hard. We don't want it to look like our trailer is parked on pavement. We want it to look like it's parked on the dirt because we're camping. So I'm going to make that line a little bit more loose and bumpy. It looks a little bit more natural. All right, almost done, I'm ready to start inking. The final thing is if you want to add anything in the distance. So on my mountains in the distance here, if I'm gonna add those trees, since they're far away, they are going to be much smaller. So I'm gonna draw a very small little triangle here with a simple trunk underneath. And if it's up here on the mountain, that would be even farther away than this one. So I'm going to draw that one even smaller. You could add as many as you want, as long as the lower it comes down on this mountain, the larger it needs to start becoming. So if I was going to draw one more tree, let's say down here, this one would be slightly larger than that one. I'm going to do the same thing over here. If I want to add any trees in the distance, I can draw little tiny ones way up here on the corner. And then they can progressively get a little bit larger. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do is get our Sharpie marker and start to do our detail work. So I'm going to put my pencil away. And I'm going to take my magic rubber eraser and erase any lines that I for sure don't want to have on my paper anymore. We'll erase all the big lines later, but I'm just kind of going in, making sure there aren't any lines that are going to confuse me later when it's time to start inking. Okay, so go ahead, grab your Sharpie marker. 
um, first thing we're going to ink is beginning with our line right underneath our wheel. Now don't make it straight, just kind of make it kind of wonky and bumpy. Next, I want you to ink your front wheel. Now you're gonna notice that when I go around my wheel, I never have a perfect circle. I want a perfect circle, but it just never happens. No one's gonna notice how wonky your wheel is. Now, I am gonna be going over all of my lines twice today. Let me show you why I like a bold outline. This is my style. I want my trailer to show up more than my trees. This is the main focus of my picture. So I'm going to be doing a double ink around my trailer. I want it to really pop off the page. Notice how thin my line is in the background here. I don't want that to be the main focus. I want this to be. So I'm gonna be doing a double ink around everything I do on my trailer today. Next, I'm gonna ink right here, the front hitch. I'm going over it twice. You remember the last time we worked with our pen, I taught you that if you hold your pen straight up and down, you're gonna have a very skinny line like this. If you hold it on its side, you're gonna have a much wider line. If you go over it twice, the line gets even darker. So look at the difference between the top line and the bottom line. It's just by holding your pen at a slight angle. Now, once I'm done with this side, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna ink my wheel. Now, if you didn't end up adding a cover over the half of your wheel, you're gonna be tracing one whole circle. I'm going over my lines twice. I'm gonna ink your hubcap the same way. And I'm noticing my, now that I've inked it, I might need to switch out my circle and bring it a little bit more to the center. So I am constantly ch changing things and correcting them as I work. I hope you don't mind doing that as well. Next, I'm gonna ink my little cover that's going over my wheel. The underside. We're going to get ready to ink this big curve that goes all the way around. Once we're done inking everything at the bottom, so go ahead and extend your line. And since we're not tracing using a straight edge next to our pen, our lines are never going to be perfectly straight, and that's okay. I want it to look hand drawn. Okay, now to get ready to do this curve, I'm going to rotate my paper slightly. I am left handed. It is more comfortable for me to go like this and kind of draw a circle or a half circle, kind of like I'm making the letter C with my paper turned. That for me is more comfortable than holding my pen like this and going up and around. For you, most of you are right-handed. You might feel a little bit more comfortable turning your paper this way, holding your pen this way, and then bringing your pen around. So however it is the most comfortable for you to trace that line, Go ahead and try to do one continuous line all the way around. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna pull it toward me. You never wanna push your pen away from you. So I don't wanna go here and go up and around. It's, it's a cleaner line if you go here, around, and back. And what I do is I rotate my paper again and I retrace my line one more time. As I come back around, there's always some little spot that I kind of got to touch up again with my tip of my pen. And then I'm just going to go around the edge to make it kind of even all the way around. So I have a nice thick line there. I'm gonna match it on this side. I'm always rotating my paper when I'm working with markers. I never keep it straight up and down. 
So once I have my trailer all outlined nice and thick, it's going to show up so nicely on our finished drawing. Now it's time to do our detail. So the detail work that you're doing inside, though, that can be a little bit thinner. You don't have to go quite this heavy on your outline. So I'm just going to start retracing everything on the inside. And I'm going to have you go ahead and start retracing everything on your inside. So we're going to work just nice, quick lines. Don't think too hard about it. Now, one more thing I want to show you. Sometimes when you're drawing, you might come up with a better idea. So I really like this stripe running through my, my trailer, but I also had thought I was going to put a window in there, but I think I'm going to simplify my drawing and not put the window there. I like this window here, but I don't think I'm going to put one in my door this time. When you get up here, if you decided to add your little pendant, I'm just gonna go real fast and retrace all your little triangles that you drew. Retrace your window, wherever you created your window. And if you added curtains, you're gonna trace that as well. Once I'm done tracing my trailer, then I want you to think about a design or pattern. So in my original picture, I did polka dots and then I left the top plain and simple. I didn't want it too busy because I kind of wanted to keep it a little bit more simple. Now I want to show you another version that I did earlier. So for this one, I made detailed curtains and a pendant and very detailed at the bottom and it seemed like it was a little bit too much going on. So in my second version, I simplified it a little bit. So why, why I'm showing you that is that I always want you to be experimenting and not worrying about doing things perfectly. So maybe on this one, instead of doing polka dots, you wanna do stripes or you wanna just keep it simple and you wanna do your favorite sports team's colors. So I want you to decide what you're going to do for your pattern or your design. I like polka dots. If I had a trailer, I would have a brightly colored one that I could teach art lessons out of. And I would travel all over the world teaching kids to draw right out of our cute little trailer. I think that would be an awesome thing to have. And maybe have cupcakes too. I think we should have cupcakes in our trailer. All right, got my polka dots going on. I think this time my polka dot theme color will be a little bit different than my last one. All right, moving on now down to our campfire and our stream. We're gonna keep this very loose and simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is very lightly, I don't wanna trace this very hard. I'm just very lightly gonna retrace the top log. So I'm just really quick going around the edge not worrying about the lines being perfect. Really quick, tracing over the top and that little swirl in the middle. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side. Now the back side, I'm just real quick tracing. Top and bottom. And that little swirl. Now for the fire, I'm gonna be swooping my hand real quick. I'm gonna start up here and go swoop and lift it up. It's not gonna be a perfect teardrop. I'm gonna do this a couple times. And then a few in the middle. You don't want this to be perfect. It's supposed to look like fire, not a teardrop. Later, we'll add some dark lines in with our Sharpie marker. I'm sorry, with our colored marker, but for now, you can just go like this and add just a couple lines on the side, following the direction that the log is laying. 
for my stream, I'm just going to retrace this line. And then I'm going to add a second one next to it, matching what I did the first time. And then you can just draw a few random lines through the middle. I only did a couple in the middle. The rest I'm going to use color on. So I'm just going to kind of follow the pattern I did before with a few gentle wavy lines. And then we're going to go over and work on our trees. So for our trees, I'm going to start with a little bit of a bumpy round underneath. I'm going to trace the trunk of the tree first, keeping my lines nice and loose. And now let's start with our first tree. So let's do this one over here because this one's a whole tree. And what I'm going to show you is this technique of making tiered trees. So how I do that is I start up here at the top and I'm just going to make a little point like this. Notice I did this really fast. I just went with my pen. And then here, the space in between that, I'm just going to go like this real quick and draw some fast lines coming down. So I went like this. I'm going to go to the next tier. Now the next tier is going to come a little farther out. So I'm going to go here, here. You see those lines are a little farther out than the last one. And then real quick, all the way across. Next tier, so a little farther out. Final one at the bottom. We'll go a little bit over the trunk. And when you're finished, you can do the same thing on your other tree on the other side of your paper. So I start at the top. And make these little feather strokes across. And the next one goes out a little farther. So it's going a little wider. Oops. I have a little gap up there. Maybe I can add another one. Why not? All right, easy peasy. Now, the next thing is to trace over our horizon line. So I'm just going to go right over that horizon line. Remember, we're not worrying about the line being perfectly straight. And I'm very lightly going to trace over our trees. Now, I'm going to do the trees first before I do the mountain. They need to be super simple, like barely touch your pen down. So it's just kind of like a light look of a tree you're really not drawing a perfect tree because they're so far away, you can't really see the detail on them. You kind of can tell they're trees because we're going to color them green, but you really can't tell from far away what it is. Lastly is to trace the mountain. So this time I'm going to hold my pen straight up and down so I have a sharp point on it. And I'm barely going to touch my pen down. I'm just going to, even if it skips in spaces where my pen isn't actually touching the paper, that's just fine. It's barely touching off the page. So now that line's nice and thin compared to this. So you're really going to notice the trailer mostly. All right. Now the next part will be to close up your marker and erase all your pencil lines. And then get your crayons ready or your markers ready. So I'm going to um, have you pause the video right now. You're going to go in and erase everything and then meet me back here and we'll start working on our coloring. All right, we're back. Let's uh, look at our project, get ready for doing some coloring. So um, if you have fine tip markers or these super tips that I was telling you about, you can use these. If you have the broader type that I normally use, these, these work great too because they've got a fine point and then a wide space. I love these because I can cover an area very quickly using them. So one thing you're going to notice is that when I'm coloring, I'm going to be rotating my paper because I want to get a very clean line across the paper without scribbling back and forth. So let me show you again my picture and I want you to see this dark blue line here. 
So let me turn my paper this way. You'll see that my line is pretty clean across here. I didn't scribble, scrabble, scribble, scrabble with the markers. The way I do that is I hold my pen like this, this angle, and I set my pen kind of on the side like this, and I pull the marker to me. So this marker can give you a pretty broad stroke all the way across. Then you can just go back in, and if you missed a space, you can just go back in with the tip. You can go over it a second time to darken your line. And then if you want to use it in tiny spaces, you're going to hold it straight up and down. So this is a much cleaner way of coloring versus taking your pen and scribble scrabbling like this because you can see all of your lines when you do that. So as you are working on your coloring today, um, I'm not gonna tell you what colors to use. I want you to have fun with this and I want you to be creative on your trailer using all kinds of colors. There's nothing that says you have to color your wheels black or gray. They can be purple or green. I want you just to have fun with your coloring. I wanna teach you a couple more little hints and tricks um, before I will leave you to color on your own. And a couple of those things are how to color your trees and your logs. So the way that I did my trees is I used a couple different colors. So I started with a lighter green. So I have a lighter green like this. If you had a crayon, you could use that as well. And I started from the top and I just brushed my marker down like this. Long strokes, putting my base coat of a light green. Now, if you didn't have light green, yellow would work great too. But just instead of doing one solid color, I just started like this, brushing my lighter color down first. And then I went in with my next color, my darker green. I have the same color in the big marker, but this is just in front of me right now, so I'm gonna use this one. And then I just went in and colored just a few of the darker green, brushing down with each little tier, each section of the tree. I'm doing it real fast, just scratching it. And then I just added a little extra on one side. So one side would be a little bit more shaded. So I'm just adding a few more lines on one side like that. So that's the way I did my trees. Uh, for, the, for the trunks of the trees, I just colored a light brown and then scribbled a little dark brown over it, and I just kind of did a few random lines. I made it match the fire, I'm sorry, the logs underneath the fire. Now I want you to look at the fire, how I did the fire. I just mixed yellows and oranges and reds, and I just swirled them around like this. And the other thing that I want to show you is on my stream. I just kind of played with some colors. I tried light blue, and I just kind of pulled the color along like this a few times in a few random spots. And then I try dark blue. I'm not necessarily matching the lines that are in there. I just kind of randomly did it. And then I even went in with a little green. And it changes colors depending on what color it goes over. And then the last thing that you can do is you can run your light blue marker over the whole thing when you're done. And it changes the color of the green. It makes it turn off aqua or turquoise. And it kind of lightens up the dark blue that I need or the royal blue. All right, lastly, I want to show you how I did a mixed media by using crayon also. So when I originally did my picture, I did it with marker, and I didn't like how I could see all the lines. I didn't feel like my trailer showed up enough. It seemed like it was just a lot of things happening. So I decided for my second time when I did it, I used crayon for my sky, my trees, and for the ground. And I'm going to show you my trick. So whenever your crayons break, or if they break, 
if you're heavy handed like I am, sometimes they break. I peel the paper off and I save these. I just stick them in a Ziploc bag and I save all my old colors of crayons. So what I do with these broken old crayons, you know, don't break your new ones, but if you have some broken ones, I take the side of the crayon, I turn my paper so I'm more comfortable, and then I can take the side of my crayon and I can quickly color an area very fast. Now, if you need to get into a tight spot, you can just kind of use the tip like this, but I'm still laying it on its side. And you'll notice I have a big piece of paper behind me because this is gonna go off the edge of the paper. So I can go in with several different colors, not just one color. And then if I wanna make a shadow, I'm just gonna press a little bit harder. So right underneath that trailer, it would be casting a shadow on the ground underneath. So I might wanna press a little bit harder right here to make it look like there's a shadow under it. I did the same thing with my trees. And then I want you to notice my mountains up above and my sky up above. I did the same thing. I used green and a little bit of brown. And in my sky, I just blended a couple different colors of blue. And then I went in for my trees and I went and colored those in with marker later. That way the trees show up. They all kind of blend together. But the most important thing in my picture is my trailer. It pops the most. And the things in the foreground, in the front, which is my fire and my stream, and my, of course, my happy camper. So I hope you had fun today learning how to draw our happy camper. And I will see you for our next lesson. Have a great day.